Disclaimer. All information in this video is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. Before relying on this information, think about your situation and seek professional advice. Before making any decision, you should double check the nature of any product or service, including its legal status and relevant regulatory requirements, and consult the relevant regulators' websites. The question, how is money created, is frequently raised in the United States, as well as many other countries. The Treasury isn't merely printing money all day. If it were, the national debt would be zero. Money is created in the United States as a type of debt. Banks make loans to individuals and corporations, who then deposit the funds in their bank accounts. Banks can then use these deposits to lend money to others. The total amount of money in circulation is one indicator of the money supply. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video. In today's video, we'll be talking about money and how it is created. So if you're interested in finding out how money is created, then stay tuned and watch this video to the end. But before we continue, kindly like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to stay notified of more interesting videos just like this one. With that done, let's get right into the video. The creation of money is viewed by some people as the biggest fraud in human history, while for others, it is a benefit and the engine of the economy. It was a procedure that, in the words of John Maynard Keynes, engages all the hidden forces of economic law on the side of destruction, and does it in a manner which not one man in a million can diagnose. Let's look at the case of the US dollar creation, as it is a global reserve currency. Many people don't realize that any dollar spent by the government sooner or later one way or another, will be taken from the taxpayers' pockets. The government can finance new spending in several ways. Raising taxes is one approach, although it is controversial. Another option is to restrict spending in some areas, but this may cause discontent or even social unrest among those who are cut off from the money stream. There is, however, another possibility. The government may expand the budget deficit to pay current spending while growing debt. The United States Treasury can issue securities such as government bonds. A bond is simply a pledge to return a particular amount of money plus interest after a certain date. It is considered a debt obligation. Government bonds are auctioned off to financial firms. Issuing bonds does not always result in the production of money. Bonds can be purchased by a private individual using previously accumulated funds. However, some bonds are bought by the Federal Reserve, which is the U.S. central bank through open market operations. The process goes as follows. The Fed buys bonds from a commercial bank by issuing a check in its name. There are no savings in the Fed's accounts. The Fed reports bonds on the asset side of the accounting equation, and on the liability side, it reports new money equal to the value of the check. When the check is received by a bank that is selling the bonds, it simply becomes new money in circulation. Does this sound complicated? Well, let's try to simplify our story here. Let's just skip to the intermediary, the financial institutions. The government issues bonds, which it then sells to the central bank, which purchases them with newly produced money, or the check for the government debts. The fact that the two institutions exchange paper or digital records establish what we now call money, or more specifically, a monetary basis. The monetary base grows with each asset purchased by the Fed. Because government bonds yield interest, it is obligatory to pay interest on each bond issued. This is called debt service. To pay for an existing bond, the government usually just issued some new bonds. This doesn't seem to be reasonable at all, does it? Imagine if you borrowed some money and spent it all at once. Now suppose that you took off another loan to pay off the previous debt, even though you were still paying interest. This is called rolling over debt. Although the face value of the loan is never repaid, the periodic interest is. This operation is included in the budget as the cost of debt servicing. These expenses are incurred regardless of whether or not money is made. When individuals purchase government bonds for savings, the interest on the debt is still paid. At the same time, the Fed distributes interest revenue to the government. However, it is less expensive for the government to borrow through debt monetization rather than merely selling bonds. It is important to understand that when debt is generated in this manner, it becomes a burden for everyone and for years to come, regardless of whether the debt was obtained through money creation or not. Debt is borrowing against your future wealth. Money creation exacerbates the situation by lowering money holders' purchasing power and allowing for larger debt that would otherwise be attainable. However, the monetary base is only one narrow measure of money. Let's see what happens next. 
the government continues to spend money on initiatives like the military, pensions, social programs, and so forth. As a result, the money is finally received by the public in some form or another. This money is then deposited by the public in commercial banks. Fractional reserve banking is a process of lending to public and commercial banks that can in turn create even more money based on the newly deposited funds. Rather than being issued directly by the government, over 95% of U.S. currency is manufactured in this way. If you understand what inflation is, you are probably aware of the repercussions of money production. Every additional dollar diminishes the purchase power of every existing dollar. This is why inflation is frequently referred to as a hidden tax. Although this phenomenon is not well understood, most of us just feel that each year we can buy less and less for the same amount of money. But it is easier for some to put the blame on the greed of entrepreneurs who raise the prices. To sum up, each newly created dollar causes the purchasing power of all other dollars to decrease. As a result of this process, the dollar's inflation is also exported abroad due to its global position as both a reserve currency and a unit of account. You may have noticed that throughout the entire process, the newly created money is based on debt. When the Fed increases the monetary base, the public debt also increases, and granting a loan by any of the commercial banks necessitates an act of fiduciary media creation. The money thus created ceases to exist once the debt is repaid. Without further borrowing, the repayment of the debt would have resulted in a strong monetary deflation. Economics professor Robert Murphy once said, If people in the private sector ever paid off all of their debts, and the federal government paid off all of its bondholders, then the supply of U.S. dollars would be virtually extinguished. Despite this fact, money is not the same as debt. The bonds and loans are perceiving money as debt is rather a popular misconception. Inflationary policy not only reduces the purchasing power of money, but also leads to clusters of malinvestments. For this reason, many Austrian economists oppose this kind of monetary policy, and they even consider the very existence of central banks as detrimental to both society and the economy. So, that's it for today. What do you think about this video? Kindly let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Also, hit the bell to receive more updates. See you next time. Thanks for watching.